Hey everyone, welcome back to Prime 5, your five biggest Nintendo news stories in the last 24 hours. And oh boy, we have some doozies today because yes folks, the video I made, I don't know, a week or two ago at this point about how, hey, the Switch sales are sinking to a point that maybe Nintendo needs to consider replacing it or price drop or something has just gotten worse and... <laughs> It, it, this was actually kind of surprising today. Uh, we have some brand new holiday deals announced by Nintendo. They gave us their Black Friday deals. So <laughs> we get to uh, take a look at that. Let's just say I'm, I'm unimpressed. Uh, next up, we have news on Sonic Frontiers, a brand new trailer, plus some information on the Switch version specifically. Oh, and Mario plus Rabbid Sparks of Hope uh, gave us an idea of what their DLC is going to be. So we get to talk about that. And... Last but not least, we're actually ending with a PlayStation story. What? Why are we talking about PlayStation? Well, you know what? I'll tell you after I remind you, hey, we are on our road to 80,000 subscribers. I would love to hit it by Thanksgiving if possible. So go ahead and drop a like and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. It helps support what we do here. It's the number one thing you could do to really support the channel. Is subscribe to the channel, drop a like, and hey, maybe even leave a comment down below letting me know which of these stories is your favorite. So our first story is that we have the updated Famitsu charts from last week and these charts are quite interesting. So we have Bayonetta 3 launch sales. We'll get into that because those aren't quite as impressive as maybe Nintendo would hope. But we have to first talk about hardware sales. Let's get this out of the way. PlayStation 5 has officially surpassed Nintendo Switch last week. PlayStation 5's base system plus all digital sold 38,866 units. Meanwhile, the Nintendo Switch, the Switch OLED, and the Switch Lite combined for 38,634 units. This is the first time essentially in six years years that nintendo switch was not at the top of the charts and this does not bode well for nintendo this does kind of show even in japan nintendo switch seems to have hit market saturation now i do suspect obviously the sales were boosted a little bit with the call of duty modern warfare 2 and other things coming out in japan and i understand that but also that never seemed to stop the switch before these are some of the lowest switch sales numbers we have seen I think it will pick up again with Pokemon, and maybe they'll be all right through December. But the writing's on the wall. Nintendo's going to have to do something. Now, another th game we want to talk about is Bayonetta 3. And it debuted at number two. Number one is still Splatoon 3. But Bayonetta 3 came up at 41,285 units. Now, we need some context for those numbers. So Bayonetta 2 that came out on Wii U. So we're talking about the Wii U release, not the Switch one. The Wii U release had about 39,000 units sold. So that means this basically sold 2,000 more units than Bayonetta 2 on a platform that is significantly more popular. I don't know about you, that doesn't bode well for Bayonetta 3, at least when it comes to, well, Japan. We'll see. Obviously, it could be evergreen. It could have a long tail of sales. It also could have sold incredibly well in the West. But right now, these are not that impressive of numbers. You gotta remember, Kamiya recently thanked Nintendo for even allowing Bayonetta 3 to exist, suggesting that Bayonetta 2 lost money. So Nintendo funding the third one was certainly not guaranteed, and he really thanked Nintendo for letting it happen. Here's hoping the Western sales pick up for this one. Otherwise, I have to wonder if this is the last we're going to see of the Umbra Witch. Next up, we have a brand new trailer for Sonic Frontiers called Showdown. And yeah, it does exactly what you would expect a showdown to do. It's a him facing off against a bunch of new enemies, showing off a couple new locales and bosses, and ending with, you know, the super Sonic going against a giant robot punching thing. It's pretty cool. Uh, but what I actually wanted to note here while we're watching that trailer is we find out that Sonic Frontiers is using FSR just like some of Nintendo's games, such as Nintendo Switch Sports and Life is Strange True Colors, which is also using it on Switch. And we don't know what version of FSR it's using. We would obviously prefer it uses 2.0, but we haven't seen that implemented on Switch yet. So it's highly likely it's using 1.0, which uses spatial upscaling for a small resolution boost. So I'm really glad just that the game's using it because that's going to obviously make it look better on Nintendo Switch. I think it's always better to use FSR 1.0 than not to. Now, again, we don't know which version it is. Maybe we got fortunate and they decided to heavily invest and go with 2.0, but it's likely the 1.0 version. Uh, I think FSR 2.0 and above is something we could see on future Nintendo hardware. Now, stop the presses. Nintendo has announced their holiday deals and their Switch bundle is amazing. It is the greatest bundle of all time at least in one context. 
Uh, yeah, the Nintendo Switch bundle is just the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe bundle, not even with the Switch OLED. It's with the red box Switch. It's the neon red and blue, and it includes three months of NSO. You know, the same Switch bundle they've been running since holiday 2017. It costs $300. This is the same price. It's the same bundle. All they've done over time is add three months of NSO in because NSO didn't exist back in 2017. But yeah, um, it's the greatest holiday bundle of all time because this will now be what? 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022. This will now be six holiday seasons that this bundle has survived and probably going to sell well. That makes it pretty amazing in one regard. It's got a lot of longevity. Not because it's a great deal or because Nintendo has a lot of creativity around the holidays. Next up, though, Nintendo did announce $20 off of select Nintendo Switch games. These are physical or digital. So Mario Party Superstars, Breath of the Wild, Animal Crossing New Horizons, Link's Awakening, Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes, and Bravely Default 2. So a couple of those in there are nice to see, but the rest are kind of your usual lot. There's going to be 33% off digital and physical copies of WarioWare, Get It Together, and Big Brain Academy. They're also knocking $40 off of Mario Kart Home Circuit, now making that a more affordable $59.99 versus the $100 it usually costs. Look, I think these deals are good that they exist, but also they're not extremely impressive, and Nintendo continues to not really care about doing a lot around the holidays and just hoping that their IP and platform is popular enough that it's going to sell well. I don't know. We'll see. This might not be the holiday season that Nintendo does best unless Pokemon really helps push Switch sales this holiday. Next up, Mario Plus Rabbids announced their DLC plan. If you have bought the gold version, you got the season pass, or even if you don't, we have some details here for you. So let's just look at the graphic. Uh, first up, we have the DLC part one that's landing in early 2023. This includes the Tower of Doom, and it says face your doom in a new combat game mode. So that should be Pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, DLC Pass 2 is going to be coming in middle of 2023, so likely summer. And it says that heroes confront a mysterious foe on a new enchanting planet. So a new planet's being added, new foe, maybe a new playable character. We'll see. Uh, and DLC Part 3 that has Rayman comes late 2023, so probably holiday 2023. And you see it says Rayman, Rabbit Peach, and Rabbit Mario embark on their own adventure. Now, it's interesting that we're kind of stuck using... Uh, those certain characters, maybe Mario isn't allowed to team up with Rayman. Maybe Rayman becomes playable in the whole game afterwards anyways. I have no idea, uh, but this is pretty exciting stuff. The DLC 2 and 3 can be bought individually. You can only have DLC Part 1 if you have the Season Pass or you bought the Gold version, which includes the Season Pass. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm really excited for this stuff. You know, as someone who's yearning for more content for this game already, hey, early 2023 Tower of Doom. No, dude, I'm there, man. I'm already there. I'm already waiting. I'm already ready. At, right after I finish off Fire Emblem Engage. Now, our last story, I told you, we're talking about PlayStation. And it's quite interesting. because We're talking about God of War Ragnarok. That's right. It comes out in a handful of days. Uh, it just had its review scores dropped. And it got a 94 on Metacritic. Sort of confirming that it's going to be the top competition with Elden Ring for Game of the Year. Reminder, Elden Ring got a 96 on Metacritic. Notably, the 94 is exactly what God of War 2018 received. Those that love the game, so just checking out some of the reviews, find that it's better than the 2018 game in almost every way. Those that criticize it say it relies on the same story pacing and beats as the first one, but now that it's spread over a much larger and more expansive world, it loses intimacy and just doesn't work as well. Some wonder if the formula set up in 2018 is getting old. For what it's worth, I would love for a formula to get old while my game is still getting a 94 on Metacritic and going to be a bestseller. I'm sure uh, most studios would accept our formula is getting old if that's the result. Anyways, it makes you wonder a smidge if, for some critics anyways, if they're going to say the same thing about Tears of the Kingdom next year when they compare it to Breath of the Wild. Yeah, I mean, hey, is the formula getting old? Is this not working for you anymore? If they're using the same storytelling um, aspect, is that not working for you? It's going to be quite interesting to see. Obviously, we don't know enough about Tears of the Kingdom, but right now, God of War Ragnarok is looking to be a Game of the Year contender. And honestly, can it dethrone Elden Ring? I don't know. I honestly don't know, but it's going to be right there. 
Me personally, I'm also hoping that maybe Xenoblade 3 and or Bayonetta 3, one of those two, uh, get into the mix as well. I don't think they have a chance to beat out God of War or Elden Ring. I think these are the two top contenders. But still, hey, I wanted to let you know because this is a major PlayStation 5 game. It's been a bit since we got one. The last one was Horizon Forbidden West earlier this year. So, woo! There we go. Anyways, folks, thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Robojams from Nintendo Prime. That was our Prime 5 today. And you know what? We're going to catch you guys in the next video.